Marydell Rawlings holds a PhD, is a TV hostess, researcher, writer, public speaker, and therapist. She is a survivor of child sexual abuse, has championed the cause for victims of sexual abuse worldwide, and speaks on family issues. Marydell and her husband Jay are co-founders of the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. They also founded Israel Vision Studios, which produces a weekly TV show broadcast around the world from Jerusalem, where she adds a unique perspective on life through her still small voice segment. I will begin with a quote from Roseanne Arnold, a TV personality. Don't stay untreated, it will kill you. My whole life has been about incest. It's why I married who I married, why I chose what I chose. Incest takes away your power, your access to your own thought process, your ability to love, even feel, because incest takes away your life. <laughs> we all have beginnings, and we don't choose our beginnings. None of us choose our families. None of us choose our height, or our noses, or our eye color, or our DNA. These are all gifts. And I have learned to love my family. I have learned to build my family. I want to give honor this morning for my God. And I will begin with this. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam shekianu vekimanu vehigianu lazman hazeh. Blessed are you, O oh Lord God of the universe, who has brought us to this time. This is a great day when we can come together to learn, to expose the enemy, not to hate. We're never allowed to hate, and we're never permitted to hate another human being. It's against the rules. And so we have to learn how to live. We have to be smarter. We have to be wiser. Thank God for my family today, for my husband who has stood with me. He is the only man that I ever told about my abuse. I didn't know that I would be worthy to marry. You see, when girls are abused, they go one way or the other. They will either go to the streets, they will become very promiscuous, or they will hold themselves. And I was the latter. No man touched me. I would not permit it. Oh, I was asked three times to be engaged. I was very popular. I was witty. I was bright. I loved to, to talk and discuss and ask questions and discover and learn and study. I loved it. But they could not get close to me. I am still carrying tremendous scars of my abuse. And the more I learn, and I have to study, because who is going to be there to teach me about myself other than others who are survivors as well? And so it has pushed me forward in a wonderful way. But I want to thank the Lord for my sons. I have David, Chris, Joshua and Daniel, all men today, all working in world media, all supporting my work. They are my greatest supporters. They have built my websites. They have helped me publish my books. They have schooled me in television. They have only encouraged me. These are my men. We have taught those boys, my husband has taught them, never to strike a woman. If you're angry, get away and cool down. They are, have all been home dads, along with being professionals in their field, because that's what my husband is. We are married 40 years this year. And God has blessed us with three kalot. Our daughters-in-laws, 
who are Terry, Ilana, and Adi, all leading professionals in their various fields of psychology, dance, and international politics. And our beautiful grandchildren, excuse me, but this is the fruit of our labor. This is more precious to me, and I love, I love how my life reaches out to others, but you have to know what feeds me. My garden, my home, my family, my God. And our little ones are Noam, Maya, Amitai, Leah, Sophia, Cecilia, Leon, and Yoni. A whole troop, four boys and four girls. <laughs> and don't worry, those who are old enough have been with Grandma. Grandma is the first to tell them that they are loved, that they are cherished, that they are created by divine design. Yes. <laughs> Grandma tells them how to protect themselves, how to protect their bodies. Yes. Grandma tells them to pay attention to their thoughts. And we take times of meditation together in our garden and we talk about what comes into our mind and how to hang on to the still, small voice. Never lies. It will keep you safe. Anyone can hear this voice. I have been called to the world. I have not just been called to the Christian world. I have been called to the world. I work with all peoples. I work with Muslims, Jews, Christians, Hindus, you name it, I've been there. Atheists, I work with them all. I don't need titles. I just need people. Amen. And God has used my life through trust. People come to me because they trust me. Because they know I have been there. And it's been amazing and will go on. The abuse of my life began in my crib. And my infant soul must have been so exercised by the injustice that even at that age I learned to fight back. By nine months, my mother tells me that I threw my bottle away and climbed out of my crib. She said I never walked. I ran. And I've been running to this day. I ran to Israel in 65. My husband and I and our infant son came back in 69, and Israel has been home ever since. We ran among the nations for seven years to the Jewish communities, straight to the rabbis and the presidents, calling them, <laughs> encouraging them to speak to their people about the vast importance of Aliyah. I have been running. Psychiatrists say that those who have been abused the most, the worst, remember the best. And yet I have worked with women all over the world, and they want me to tell them that they have been sexually abused. You will never hear it from my lips. I don't tell anyone what they've been through. I listen. And I teach them how to be still and to listen. Because if God wants us to know something, he is well able to tell us. Amen. I remember once I was in Australia, and I had a group of women. They were very nervous about the subject. And one lady was crying. They came after my lecture and sat in a private room, and one woman was crying. And I came to her and she said to me, I have no idea why I'm crying. And I said, well, just sit quietly, because the Lord will show you. And I worked with other people in the room. There was a beautiful, tall, blonde girl, 17, getting ready to graduate from high school, and she was shaking. And she said, this is not a big deal. I, I don't know why this is bothering me. And she was, I said, well, what do you think is bothering you? And she said, well, I'm from such a good family, and, and my cousin is, he's so wonderful and so handsome, but 
he has sexually abused me. But it shouldn't bother me. I should be all right. And I said to her, your mind will lie to you. Your soul will lie to you. But your body will never lie. Because the body takes it all in and suffers, and many times, not so silently. And then I went back to the mother who was crying, and she said to me, Oh my God! And I listened, and she said, I have only abused my children all of their lives. Now that's a deep work for an abuser to come face to face with their criminal acts is a deep and marvelous work. I didn't do it. 